Hello there, thanks for tuning in again and welcome. My name is Jonathan Lagang and uh, I want to take you through uh, this series on dreams, revelations and interpretations. We've been looking at that in the last uh, few episodes. I'm beginning to go deeper now. Uh, the last episode we spoke about sources of dreams. I showed you different sources of dreams and uh, where they come from, and also started on interpretation as to how to look at the dream, analyze the contents, and properly interpret uh, it to find out its meaning, because dreams will always contain messages of some sort. So before we start, I'd like us to just say what we pray. Father, I thank you for my viewer, my listener. I pray by the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you will enlighten us, bring us into higher understandings of this subject. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now, I want you to know something. The Word of God is superior um, as long as divine revelations are concerned. Everything can be analyzed and interpreted from the standpoint of God's Word. That's the reason why every point coming to you, I bring out a scripture or two to give you insight or to clarify or to clarify what it really is. So in the last episode, we started talking about interpretation and we decided to look at different examples, just hand pick different examples from scripture to look at the dreams these individuals had, analyze the contents and be able to interpret uh, the dreams so that from interpreting those dreams we can uh, learn the skill that will enable us to interpret our dreams in our contemporary world today. So we started looking at the life of Joseph, Genesis 37. I showed you, uh, we talked about the first dream Joseph had and how his brothers only interpreted the dream. They, they poorly interpreted it because they misunderstood it. Uh, they misunderstood the objects, the characters, and the symbols that were used there. And as a result, they weren't able to get a concrete and a proper interpretation. And I think uh, rightly interpreting a dream is very important, especially if that dream holds message about the future. If it contains messages about the future, it is important to clearly understand the contents, the facts, and then be able to interpret it. So let's look at another dream Joseph had and be able to analyze the contents and see if we can interpret. This is Genesis 37 from verse 9. Then he dreamed still another dream. Let me stop here to say something. As you would later discover that both dreams, God was saying the same thing in different ways to Joseph. I just want to uh, come out of the box to tell you something about God. That in the speakings of God, in God's communication modes, God is known to repeat a matter or a word of God. One of the ways to know God spoke is that he will repeat again and again. And I believe it's because God's word is true. His word is here and amen. He doesn't think about changing his word because it is truthful and complete in itself. So if God tells you one thing, he can repeat it again for emphasis or repeat it again because there is urgency attached to your part or your participation in the fulfillment of that word. So God spoke again in another dream to Joseph here. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream. And this time the sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. The sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. The sun, the moon, and the eleven stars bow down to me. Now, 
Here's what his father said in verse 10. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. Now, let's look at Jacob's interpretation. Because of course, Jacob too used to have dreams. I, I believe Joseph got these dreams. You know, he was hereditary, spiritual hereditary from Joseph down or from Jacob to Joseph. You remember when Jacob had the dream of the ladder to heaven? So let's look at Jacob's interpretation. Let's see if he really got the picture correct. Jacob picked out the objects of symbol in the dream which were the sun, the moon, and 11 stars. Of course, we know that we, we have multiple galaxies in the universe containing millions and billions of stars. But in this dream, just 11 stars. And Jacob, here was his interpretation, that the sun represented Jacob himself, that the moon represented Joseph's mother, and the stars represented his 11 brothers. First of all, uh, to show you that Jacob misunderstood this dream and didn't interpret it appropriately, at this time, Joseph's mother was dead. If you read a few chapters before now, she died giving birth to Benjamin, Jacob's last son. So, let's say, okay, he got 11 stars to be the sons. How about mother? He wasn't referring to Leah. He would have said your stepmother or called her name Leah. So that's the first uh, part of the, the interpretation that shows you Jacob missed it. And there's several others that I may not bring up uh, because of time. But let's look at it this way. Remember, God was showing Joseph something that was going to happen in the future. And I told you that dreams contain messages of the future. And this future was not going to occur within the environment of Joseph's immediate family. God was already preparing to send him somewhere where all of this would play out. From the first dream, we saw that the scenario was Egypt because Joseph's brothers were not farmers, they were shepherds. And Joseph was having a dream related to farming. That means this had to do with the Egyptian economy or the Egyptian uh, way of life. So I believe in this second dream because God was speaking again the same thing he was still emphasizing on Egypt. In ancient Egypt, you can Google it up or browse, it, browse this. In ancient Egypt, Egypt uh, in its ancient civilization was filled with a lot of superstitions and uh, supernatural beliefs. They had several gods that they bowed to or they paid obeisance to, of which Pharaoh was considered a god. Now, the word Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh means son of the sun god. It was believed that the chiefest of all the gods of Egypt was the sun, and Pharaoh was believed to be a, a prince or a son to the sun. So the sun in Joseph's dreams represented Pharaoh of Egypt because Ra was the sun of God. The moon, the queen of the Pharaoh was um, emblem, emblemized using the crescent moon. You know, the crescent moon is that moon, you know, very tiny, very slim. Um, several religions use it. The crescent moon. So, the queen of Egypt was um, often emblemed or symbolized using the crescent moon. And the stars referred to the Egyptian senators or counselors that were called wise men. In those days, kings surrounded themselves with wise men who were learned in astrology, in divination, and in things that were beyond the natural. To be able to provide wise counsel to the king. So, what God was so showing Joseph 
was I was going to give you an idea that was going to make you stand out in brilliance and in wisdom so much that the king of Egypt, which is the Pharaoh, his family represented by the queen, and his senators, his staff represented by the wise men of Egypt, were going to bow to you. They were going to submit and subscribe to this idea, this wisdom that I was going to put inside of you. So Joseph had a dream and he saw the sun, the moon, and 11 stars bowing before him. Now, to confirm further what I just explained to you, I'll read a scripture to you, and it's in Psalms 105. This is a prophetic discourse about um, the nation of Israel, how she was formed. When God started with her forefathers, with Abraham, Isaac, and down to the nation of Israel. Verse 16, Psalms 105. Moreover, he called for a famine in the land, speaking of Egypt. He destroyed all the provision of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. You will know that this was what happened in Genesis. Verse 20, verse 19. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people let him go free. He made him lord of his house house okay which the queen represented because the woman is often looked at as the head of the home all right the man is looked at as the head of the family but the woman has managerial responsibilities over the home so he made him lord over his house and ruler of all his possessions to bind his princes at his pleasure and teach his elders wisdom so God was showing Joseph that I was going to put a wisdom in you and you will display superiority over the wisdom of Egypt such that the leadership of Egypt was going to bow to this wisdom and in it will be the salvation of not just the economy of Egypt but the whole world from the famine that came. So yeah, there you have it, another wrongly interpreted dream. And well, it's okay not to blame them because um, as at this time, they didn't have the word of God wholesome, you know, in its entirety. But we have the privilege of the entire scriptures, the word of God to us, so that through the lens of scripture, we can have wisdom to understand these things and then bring them um, to how it plays out in our everyday life. I'm sure you have learned something today Please spread this around and uh, try to use this skill, this knowledge. Look at the dreams you've had and uh, subject them to these things and to the word of God and be able to uh, trust the Holy Spirit to gain interpretation. We'll talk more on how to use scripture to understand and to interpret uh, dreams that you receive in the subsequent episodes. Thank you very much and bye for now. God bless you.